Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I thought I would go through some of my most anticipated books for 2022. So I thought the way that I would do this video is to scroll through Goodreads on my phone because as I've been coming across books that I'm excited for for next year I've just been adding them to my Goodreads to my want to read shelf. There's actually I think about 20 books on this list so it might take me a while to go through them all but I think I'm just going to give brief synopses for each of them because I obviously haven't read the books yet and so I don't want to say anything that could be wrong. So so yeah, I'm gonna try and remember how to screen record on my phone and then I'll put it on the screen here so hopefully you can see. But the first book on my list is Her Perfect Twin by Sarah Bonner, I think is how you pronounce the author's name. So I actually have an arc of this through NetGalley, which is why I wanna get around to it soon because it comes out in January. And all I know about this is I think it's a thriller that's set in the pandemic and it's about two twins where I think one of the twins kills the other twin and then takes over her identity but then lockdown happens and she realizes oh crap I can't pretend to be two people because I'm not meant to be leaving my house I think that's what it's about I might be completely wrong it sounded really interesting it sounded quite unique and I feel like this is going to be one of those thrillers that's either amazing or it's completely ridiculous but I'm excited to find out <laughs> next on my list is Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon and I'm trying to remember what this book is about. I think it's a romance between, yeah, a TV meteorologist and a sports reporter. And this is the same author that wrote The X Talk, which I haven't read yet, but I've heard really good things about. And so I think that was why I was sort of interested in this one. Yeah, Rachel Lynn Solomon is an author that's on my radar. Next up we have To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. So Hanya Yanagihara is the author that wrote A Little Life, which is quite quite a well-known book and I think it's over a year now since I read it but it's one of those books that has stuck around in my mind and that sometimes I think about. I don't actually know what this one is about but I think it's a historical fiction so it spans a few hundred years. Yeah it's set in an alternative version of 1893 America in New York and then there's another timeline in 1993 and another timeline in 2093 so it does sound like the kind of book that I would enjoy. I do tend to like books that have different timelines and especially books where you have one timeline in the past and one timeline in the present day or the future so really interested to see reviews for this one because I think that's going to determine whether I actually pick this one up. Next up we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. Now this is one of the few fancy books on my list because I like looking out for new releases but I don't often pay attention to fancy book releases because I already have a huge backlist of fancy books and fancy series that I want to get around to and so I try not to look at new fancy releases but sometimes I can't help myself because this book in particular has the most beautiful cover. Apparently it's the first book in a duology so I might give this one a go because duologies don't scare me as much as longer series but this one I think is a debut fantasy and it's inspired by by a Chinese legend. Yeah, I think this is about a girl who grew up on the moon and it says here that her mom was exiled for stealing this elixir of immortality and she's being pursued by the emperor. And I think that this is about this girl discovering that she has magical powers and trying to save her mom, something like that. Next up we have Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. So Colleen Hoover is an author that I have read from before, but I've only read one of her books and that was, what was it called? Regretting You, I think. <laughs> Is what it's called which I read for a reading vlog last year and I enjoyed it but I think that there's potential for me to love Colleen Hoover's books more because I think I gave Regret and You four stars and I've heard really good things about some of her other books. She writes really really angsty contemporaries so yeah like I said I'm definitely interested in reading more of her books. Next up we have Violetta by Isabel Allende and I can't actually remember what 
this book is about but I think it's historical fiction so it's set in 1920 and it's about a woman whose life spans 100 years and apparently she witnesses a lot of historical events within the 20th century. I'm trying to remember who it was that I saw talking about this book and I can't remember but I think that's why I added this to my list because I saw someone else talk about it in a video and it does sound like the kind of book that I would like because it sounds like quite an epic story and I am trying to get more into historical fiction. I've said this before on my channel but I really like historical fiction when I actually make myself pick it up but it's not a genre that I tend to reach for and so I thought this would be a good one to have on my radar for next year. Next on my list is Count Your Lucky Stars by Alexandria Balfour which is the third book in the Written in the Stars series. I say it's a series but they are written as standalone so you don't have to read the books in order if you don't want to but I have read the first two books in this series and really enjoyed them so I'm really excited for this next one. The only thing I'm not sure about with this one is that it's a second chance romance and typically I haven't had the best look <laughs> with second chance romances but it's a female female romance and I think that both main characters are pansexual if I'm remembering rightly. Yeah it follows one of the side characters from the first two books so really excited for this one. <laughs> so the next book on my list is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. Oh my goodness I nearly forgot her name then. So this is the second book in the Crescent City series which I liked. So I liked the first book in this series. I didn't love it as much as the Akatar series. Now I have a bit of a dilemma <laughs> with this book because it comes out in February and I know that because it's been a while since I read the first book in this series I would like to reread it before I read book two. However I don't think I'm going to be able to reread book one in January. I don't think I'm going to have time so I don't know what to do. I mean what I want to do is wait a while until I can reread book one and then go on to book two but I'm nervous that I'm going to end up seeing spoilers on Twitter or Instagram because people like to spoil Sarah J Mass books. Maybe I just need to accept that I'm probably going to end up seeing spoilers for this book but it's fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure I'll get round to it eventually next year. Next on my list is The Museum of Ordinary People by Mike Gale and I don't actually know a lot about this book because I think it was only announced recently but I have read three of Mike Gale's other books and really really enjoyed them. I think I gave them all five stars or I gave two of them five stars or two of them four stars. I don't think I've given him anything less than a four stars is what I'm trying to say. So I'm really excited about this one because he writes really emotional contemporaries. Yeah this says it's about a box of mementos that are found abandoned in a skip following a house clearance and it's an uplifting story about memory, love, grief, loss and the things we leave behind. So sounds like it's going to be another book that's possibly going to make me cry. <laughs> okay so next up we have a thriller and that is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley and I wasn't sure about adding this book to my list because I didn't love the first two books by this author. I think I gave them both three stars but I wanted to give The Paris Apartment a go because it does sound a little bit different from the first two books that I read by this author. Yeah it's about a woman who moves into an apartment in Paris that I think is owned by her half-brother and when she gets there she finds that her brother is missing and she's also not really sure how he's able to afford this amazing apartment and so it sounds like an interesting mystery. The main issue that I had with the other books that I've read by this author is that the characters were really really unlikable and I don't mind reading about unlikable characters but they were unlikable to the point where I just did not care about reading about them so I'm hoping that that's not the case with this book. Next on my list is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake and this is a debut novel and it's a sapphic romance about I think two neighbours. Yeah it follows a woman who goes back to her hometown and I think that she ends up having a relationship with her stepsister's best friend, something like that. I'm pretty sure the reason that I added this to my list is because I heard someone else talk about it in an anticipated book releases video and I'm pretty sure that the reviews so far look really good actually and I've heard it described as enemies to lovers or hate to love which 
which is one of my favourite romance tropes, so have high hopes for this one. Next on my list is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. So Rebecca Searle is the author that wrote In Five Years, which was one of my favourite books of 2020. So I'm really excited for this one because I think it follows a woman whose mom has passed away and she ends up travelling to Italy and she ends up running into her mom in Italy, but her mom as a 30 year old. It seems kind of similar to In Five Years in that it's a contemporary but with a slight sci-fi twist and In Five Years was really really emotional and I think that that's why I enjoyed it so I'm hoping that this is going to give me those similar feelings. Next on my list is Sundial by Katarina Ward. So this is the same author that wrote The Last House on Needless Street which I read a few months ago now and at the time I gave it four stars because it wasn't given me that five star feeling initially as I was reading it. However, the more that I think back on that book, the more I think that I just need to give it five stars because I can't stop thinking about it. Don't actually know much about what Sundial is about, but it's described as a twisty psychological horror and apparently it has a lot of deeply disturbing twists, which sounds really interesting. <laughs> Next on my list is The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armantrout, which is the fourth book in the From Blood and Ash series and I don't know when I'm actually going to get round to this one because I still haven't read the prequel book so there's another series that's coming out alongside this that's set in the same world but in the past and I haven't got round to that one yet so I want to read that one first because I've heard that's the right order to read them in is publication order. Also I want to wait and see what the reviews say first because I loved the first two books in this series and I liked the third book but but I did feel like it started to go a little bit downhill in terms of the fantasy elements. I still really like the romance in this series, but I want to wait and see what other people say first because I'm a little nervous that the series is just going to keep on going downhill. Next on my list is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. So Simone St. James wrote The Sundown Motel, which I read in October, I think it was, and really, really enjoyed. I gave it five stars. I don't read a lot of paranormal horror but I thought that the tension in that book was done really really well and I'm excited about this one because I think it has a similar premise in that it follows a character who is investigating something. Yeah there's two different timelines one set in 1977 and one set in 2017 and I think it's about a true crime blogger who's interviewing a woman that was acquitted of killing these two men in the past but she's been acquitted and since then she's lived in in isolation in this mansion and I believe that this journalist or this blogger decides to interview her. Next on my list is The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynne. So this is book two in the Bloodsworn saga. I read book one last year so book one is The Shadow of the Gods and I really enjoyed it. It was the first book that I read by John Gwynne. I am actually now currently reading The Faithful and the Fallen and I'm enjoying it too but I think that Shadow of the Gods is still my favourite book that I've read by John Gwynne so far because because it just felt so epic. <laughs> Book one follows three different characters and it's set in this world that's inspired by Norse mythology. Yeah, basically this world used to be run by these gods. However, the gods are now extinct, but there are still descendants of the gods that are present in this world. And they are very much feared because the gods were not good and they essentially destroyed themselves and that's why they're now extinct. I do think I'll need to reread the first book before I read the second book so I might wait and see when the third book's coming out before I commit to reading the second book and rereading the first book as well. Next up we have The No Show by Beth O'Leary which is a contemporary and I think this is about a group of women who are all stood up for a date. Yeah it says three women, three dates, one missing man. So I think it's about three women that are meant to go on a date with a guy but he ends up standing them all up and so I think, I'm assuming that they form a friendship. I'm not really sure but I really liked Beth O'Leary's first two books, The Flat Share and The Switch. I didn't like The Road Trip, which I read early this year. That's her third book, but that is a second chance romance and I have learned that I don't like second chance romances. And so I'm hoping that because the no-show sounds like more of a contemporary rather than a romance, I think I should hopefully like it a lot more. Next up we have Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which 
which is a romance about two rivals and it says a plot twist that they didn't see come in so I don't know whether that means that there's actually going to be a plot twist or whether the plot twist is that they end up falling for each other because this is obviously a romance. <laughs> I really enjoyed Beach Read by Emily Henry and I liked People We Meet on Vacation as well. I think that Beach Read is still my favourite book by this author but I'm really excited for this one because it sounds like it's rivals to lovers which is what Beach Read was so hoping that I'm going to really love this one. Okay so the final two books on my list are both books that aren't coming out until the summer so it's possible that the publication dates might change but the first of those two books is The It Girl by Ruth Ware. The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware is one of my favourite thrillers of all time. I read it a few years ago and just loved it. I think that Ruth Ware does a really good job of writing tension and making you feel on edge and so I'm really hoping that this book will have those similar vibes. From what I gather this is about a woman called Hannah who went to Oxford University and she had this group of friends while she was there including a girl called April who was like the it girl. However by the end of their second semester April was dead. The story then picks up a decade later where Hannah and a guy from that friendship group are now in a relationship and expecting their first child and the man who was convicted of killing April has just been released. No he's not, he's just died in prison and a young journalist comes knocking and suggests to Hannah that maybe this guy wasn't responsible. Like I said I am really excited for this one because I think that this does have potential to be a five stars. The final book on my list is a book that I really really struggle to pronounce because I think it's pronounced Babel or Babel and this is by RF Quang who wrote the Poppy War series but I've heard that this is very very different to the Poppy War series because I don't know if it's actually even fantasy. I know that it's dark academia and it's set in Oxford. Yeah that's all I really know but I think this is one of those books where I don't want to know much more than that because it might have some sort of mystery to it. So really excited to get to this one. I think this is going to be a really really popular book next year. Okay so that does bring me to the end of the list and I have no idea how long this video is going to be because I've been talking for pretty much my whole lunch break. So thanks for watching. If you have made it this far let me know in the comments what books you're excited for for 2022. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Bye!